Hey guys, how you going? I hope you're all doing well and welcome to this video which is a what I ate in a day to lose weight. Now I have made a, another video just like this and I will link it up here if you want to go and check it out but you guys seem to be really interested and I'm always getting asked to do more of these so I thought I would do another one of what I was doing and general meals that I was eating while I was on my weight loss journey. Now I know how confusing and overwhelming the world of nutrition can be when you're trying to lose weight and there's so much advice coming from different angles. So in this video I wanted to add a couple of extra tips that might help you along your way with nutrition in regards to fat loss. I personally didn't know any information about nutrition when I was losing weight and in a way I'm kind of glad I didn't really look too much into it because I think I would have become so overwhelmed with information that I wouldn't have known which way to turn but I just kept it really simple so as you'll see in this video my meals are nothing spectacular and I will talk about these and some of the tips too but essentially I just worked on reducing my portion sizes making some sw simple switches to slightly lower calorie options and reducing some of my snacks as well but pre previously I'd been eating quite a lot of food and so I was just reducing how much I was eating so tip number one is just to keep it simple. An example of a super simple and easy switch I made was my morning coffee. So in the past, I would have had a milky latte with three sugars sometimes. And I started to reduce how many sugars I was having. And then eventually I moved to having mostly black coffees with a dash of milk instead. So that's a super quick example of how I could easily reduce how many calories I was consuming throughout the day without really having to change much or pay much attention. So if you're looking for fat loss, look for these simple switches that you can make throughout the day. I often found that it wasn't what I was eating per se, it was how much I was having. So having a large latte rather than having a regular one, having three sugars instead of having none or half a sugar, it was all adding up to just having a lot of food. I mean, a couple of other super simple switches you could make would be, for example, if you eat bagels, you could go to bagel thins or just have half a bagel and then fill up the rest of it with some vegetables or something else. Nowadays, there's a lot of sauces that you would add to your meals that you can actually find a different version which is a bit more natural for example tomato ketchup versus salsa it's not exactly the same but eventually you get used to it or you could go half and half all right so keep it simple and with tip number one in mind let's head over to breakfast so for breakfast we're going to be having yogurt with fruit now I'm going to have whatever I have in my kitchen, but obviously this just changed up all the time. So today I'm having coconut yogurt, but in the past I used to have a lot of Greek yogurt because I just loved it so much. So I'm just chucking that in a bowl. I'm not measuring anything out. I'm just having however much I think. And then I'm going to chop half a banana. I'm putting it in the bowl nicely and I actually do this just on a regular basis because I think it's nice to eat food that looks pretty. I've just added some almond butter and now I'm just putting on some cacao nibs as well. I picked up some blooms from a farm market the other day so they're going in. Some seeds. I'm putting on some chia, I've had this chia in my cupboard for so long and some honey and that is breakfast done i ate this straight afterwards and i had forgotten how delicious this was it was so good but like i say you can just throw in anything that you have in your cupboard it doesn't have to be fancy all right breakfast is done and here is tip number two which is just to make it as easy as possible you don't need to follow any particular diets and you definitely don't need to cut any specific foods out at all now I know there's tons of information and opinions out there which are telling you to either cut certain foods out, add certain foods in, or to follow a particular diet. And they often seem to be backed up by either results or scientific jargon to make you believe that it's really true. But I promise you, you do not need to cut specific foods completely out of your diet and you don't need to follow a specific diet plan either. Now that's not to say that particular diets or cutting certain food groups out is a bad thing. Some people work really well cutting a specific food group out or following a particular diet plan. But all of these diets work in terms of fat loss by reducing how many calories you're consuming and putting you in a calorie deficit. So if being low carb or keto is not right for you, then you don't need to do it. I personally didn't cut anything out. I still had chocolate, I still had bread, I still had all the things I enjoyed. I was just mindful of how much of that I was eating and like I said in tip number one I just made some simple switches so I could still have the same foods but maybe they were either lower calorie I was just mindful of how much I was eating of it 
So in order to make it as easy as possible for yourself, just make it work for your lifestyle. You don't need to follow any particular diet plan and you don't need to cut any food groups out. And one other thing is that when you're trying to lose weight, you might be tempted to go online and find example meal plans or get some inspiration for some recipes that you could follow, which is probably why you've clicked on this video. Now that is totally fine. I still go online and look for meal inspiration as well. However, sometimes these recipes can be a little bit too over the top. They have to be super fancy and sometimes including really crazy ingredients and obviously terms like superfoods are often thrown in as well. Again, you can just keep your meals super simple. As you can see in this video, everything that I consumed is just basic normal food and you can spice it up with some spices and some sauces and that sort of stuff, but it doesn't always have to be Instagram worthy, beautiful meals with loads of variety and trying a new recipe every day. You can regularly have the same meal. In fact, I still pretty much have the same dinner every single night because I love it so much. Don't feel pressured into splashing the cash on all these fancy ingredients like buckwheat flour and acai powder if you don't want it. Instead, take the money and spend it on something nice for yourself. And speaking of making it easy, we are heading on into lunch. All right, who does not love beans on toast? So half a tin of beans is going on the hob to cook so you can get them nice and thick and sticky. I'm cutting off a slice, a nice thick slice of sourdough bread and that's gonna go straight in the toaster. I had some spinach in my fridge so I thought I would chuck that on just to add a little bit of greenery and then the beans are going on top of that. I added plenty of pepper, some chili flakes and some salt and here comes a fried egg. You could boil one, you could poach one, whatever you feel like but I just fried mine in some fry light and chucking on some chili flakes. It's all about the seasoning for me. And there you have it, a super easy, quick, cheap, delicious lunch. So I thought I would slide in my mid-afternoon snack, which is usually something with hummus. And these ones are garlic crackers, but I also have rice crackers or vegetables with it. And I just put some chili flakes in as well, which adds a little bit of flavor. So good. So beans on toast is such a classic and such a good meal as well. But we are back and we're gonna talk about tip number three. And I wanna quickly touch on macronutrients, or you might hear them commonly referred to as macros. Now, when we refer to macronutrients, what we're talking about are the food groups that we have in large quantities within our diet. And the three main ones are fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Now, as you all know, carbohydrates is the one that probably has the worst connotations attached to it, especially in regards to weight loss. But I'm here to tell you that there is absolutely nothing wrong with consuming carbs. In fact, they taste amazing, so why would you want to cut them out? So it's all well and good me telling you that you don't need to cut carbs out, but what's more important is that you have a very basic understanding of why these aren't bad for you. And so if we're trying to look at the three macros, protein, fats, and carbohydrates, out of those three, carbohydrates gives you the quickest source of energy. So your body can use that energy very, very quickly. That's why people often consume carbs before they train. Now that being said, carbohydrates are less satiating than protein and fats. So if you're finding that you're getting hungry throughout the day or by the evening you're getting hungrier as well, then it might be worthwhile thinking about incorporating a little bit more protein or fats into your meals. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with keeping carbohydrates in your diet if you like them and your goal is weight loss. With weight loss, the most important factor is that you're consuming a consistent calorie deficit. And I had loads of videos on this if you wanna go and check them out. So I will try and link them down below or I'll pop them up here as well. But essentially, as long as you're consuming a calorie deficit, what you're doing to get there is going to be individual for everyone. So like I said in my other tips, make it simple and make it as easy as possible for you. Some people like to follow a diet, some people like to cut things out, and some people just like to reduce their portions like me. There really is no right or wrong, and if I was going to give you one piece of advice, it would be just to try and have as much balance as possible. Okay, time to get on with our day, and we are moving on to dinner. So dinner time and we are having one of my favourites, a burrito bowl. So I just picked up some peppers and I'm chopping those nice and finely and throwing them in a saucepan to fry off. Onto the guacamole, I'm just going to get half an avocado and scoop that into a bowl.
So we've mushed that up and I'm adding in some diced red onion, some diced tomato, and of course some salt and pepper, and then we're gonna give that a good mix. All right, let's start putting this bad boy together. Okay, so some pre-packaged lettuce, let's just make it easy. That's gonna fill the bottom of the bowl and then we're gonna put in our guacamole. I've just got some brown microwavable rice that I've heated up, so I'm just having a couple of tablespoons of that. Some chopped tomato, just a filler really. And then this is the fajita kit that I usually use. So it comes with salsa and it comes with seasoning and then you also get some tortillas as well. So I'm putting those aside for now, but I'm gonna definitely use that salsa. I also chopped up some chicken and that's frying off and I've added the fajita seasoning and here it is. So I've mixed the peppers, the chicken and the fajita seasoning together and that's gonna be the bulk of our meal. I also added some refried beans in, which for some reason I haven't shown you, but they're in there. And then I've just toasted up a pita bread or half a pita bread, chopped it up and that's gonna become my tortilla. And then I'm just gonna put on a little bit of that coconut yogurt just to freshen it up a little bit. Of course, I've seasoned it with salt and pepper and voila, a beautiful burrito bowl. And the final thing of the day is a nice cup of herbal tea with some dark chocolate. This is a habit that I got into. I would always have one square or two squares of dark chocolate and a herbal tea for my dessert. Once I'd got in the habit of having this, I really, really enjoyed having it as my dessert every night. All right guys, I have one final thing to talk about and that is what do you do if you're still finding that you're hungry? Now when you're eating in a calorie deficit, obviously you're reducing how much food you're eating compared to what you're normally used to. And so you might experience a little bit of hunger and we would expect to see this every now and again, but obviously there's a line between being a little bit hungry every now and again and being really, really hungry. So how do you deal with this and how do you manage that? Again, this looks different for everyone. So if you're finding that you're particularly hungry in the evenings and the rest of the day you're not too bad, you could potentially look at the timings of your meals and pushing them all back a little bit. That way you're having dinner a little bit later on in the evening and you might find that you're just not as hungry before bed. It could be what you're eating. So we touched on macronutrients and talking about how protein and fats are more satiating. So if your diet is built up off simple carbohydrates, then you might find that you're actually quite hungry throughout the day. So incorporating a little bit more protein or fats into your diet might just fill you up for a little bit longer. If you're currently not snacking and you think that snacks might help curb your hunger a little bit in between meals, then you might want to add some in and just take a few extra calories from your meals by reducing portions or changing something out in those. There are also tons of lifestyle factors that can affect hunger and your eating. So make sure you're getting adequate amount of sleep. So between seven and eight hours is ideal. Make sure you're managing stress and having some time to yourself. Make sure you're drinking water and you're hydrated and that you're moving your body in a way that you enjoy as well. So the key really is to have balance and to remove as much stress as possible. All right guys, that is it. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and that has given you a few different ideas for meals that you potentially could have and maybe also a few extra tips as well. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Take care.